Howdy folks. This is Hal, your friendly geology instructor. And today we're gonna to talk about lava rivers. What the heck is a lava river and how do we know one happened if we're not currently watching it? So a little bit of orientation. Right in front of us is the Pacific Crest Trail. There's a few hikers on it, my uh, backpacking buddies. And there's lava all around us. So we're looking west. We, the lava flow that we're in the middle of right now is the Collier Cone Lava Flow. So the Lava River, what's our evidence? First of all, hopefully you can see we're in a very steep area. So I'm panning around horizontally and the trail in front of us drops down, 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 down. So this is like the tube or the slide that the water went down. There's obviously lots of lava rocks in front of us, and you can see all the way out into the distance a lava flow. But the coolest part here is that lava rivers channelize, meaning they form a molten channel with solid walls. And the solid walls are what's really cool and all around us. So notice how smooth they look. That's the lava flowing past and some combination of both physically abrading it, like scraping it and melting it, creates this really smooth side on the side of the channel. If we look to the left, we can see the same thing, especially down there just above that snow field. Lots of really smooth sides that are created by the lava river flowing past, abrading it, melting it. So we're in the channel of a lava river right now. The lava that's left below us would be the dregs of the flow as the flow lowered and got to the end, all we get is a little bit. But what this really means is the lava river used to be as tall as the side of these cliffs on either side, which is pretty mind blowing. Imagining a lava river 50 feet above my head right now. Cool.